at our church, we are still in our series, if we can get the computer to work, on Excel Still More, Striving for Spiritual Success in 2017. Now, why does the Bible tell us to excel still more when it comes to our spiritual life? Why does the Bible tell us to strive for spiritual success, meaning grow in our faith with God, grow in our relationship with God? Why does the Bible tell us to excel still more when it comes to our spiritual life? Because it would be a blessing to our physical life. Yes, sir. Now this is basically the theme or the thesis of this sermon series. That this sermon series is about this. That my spiritual condition determines, directs, dictates my physical life. Yes, sir. Say that with me. The condition of my spiritual life determines the condition of my physical life. Amen. So in other words, if I am struggling with my physical life, more than likely it is related to my spiritual life. Amen. Proverbs 3, 7 and 8 tells us that. Proverbs 17, verse 22. Jeremiah 2, 17. Time and time again, it clearly tells us in the Bible that our spiritual life determines what happens to our physical life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And here in the series so far, we have learned that to jumpstart our spiritual life, it begins by trusting Him. Ooh. But not just trust Him, but to trust Him more is God's challenge to us this 2017. Which simply means, in practical sense, stop worrying. Mm. For us to stop <coughs> worrying, we must trust Him more. Yes, so last, last week we learned about praying. And one of the ways that we can improve or make our spiritual life healthy is by praying. By God's, but God's challenge to us is this, pray more. That's right. Pray more. That means, simply means this, that we must have a designated time and a designated place they're in our house wherein we can be alone with God and pray. Amen. And it's always helpful if we have a little notebook where we, we can write down our prayer request so we can tell it to God. Yes. Now here today, God has another challenge for us to make our spiritual life healthy. And that is read the Bible more. Read the Bible more. Now why should I read the Bible more? more now here's what i'm going to do allow me to do this allow me to quiz you not in a bad way but allow me to and if your answer to one of the questions i'm going to ask you is a no because i have did it to myself and one of my answers was a no that means we have to read the bible more you following me here for instance who wrote the bible How many books are there in the Bible? You know, there are so many books in the Bible, and every one of them do have a purpose. So what's the purpose of the every book in the Bible? Do, do you know? For instance, what's Ecclesiastes for? I can't even spell that word. You know, what, what is Leviticus about? And what's 1 Corinthians? And what is Revelation? Why is the Bible divided into two books? Old Testament and New Testament. What does Testament mean? Allow me to ask you other questions. Why is the Bible called the Word of Life? Or the Living Words? Why is the Bible considered more precious than gold and sweeter than honey? Why is the Bible called the Giver of Joy? or the reviver of soul, or as David once said, the great rewarder. Is the Bible really the message from God? Now how would I know for sure that the Bible is truly God's word? Am I living my life according to the Bible? If I believe that the Bible is God's Word, am I living my life according to the Bible? Such as what King David once said in Psalm 119 verse 11. Your Word I have treasured in my heart. 
So the question is this, am I treasuring the word of God in my heart? In other words, am I hiding God's word in my heart? In other words, am I living according to the word? Or, look at what he said also in Psalm 119 verse 9, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to his word. Am I living according to his word? Am I keeping his word in me? Or is his word still in the bookshelf? Am I living my life according to his word? Or according to the word of God? Or am I living my life according to Google? Right? Or how about this one? Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. So the question is, is the Word of God, God, the Word of Christ, richly dwelling in me, or is it poorly or scantily in me? Now, if your answer to one of those questions I have asked, like me, is a no, then you and I would need to do one thing. We need to read the Bible more. Do I know that you read the Bible? Of course you do. I know you read the Bible. And God made it easy for us, because now you can download the Bible app, and so there it is on your phone. You can always read the Word. But God's challenge to us is this, read the Bible more. But why would I do that? What should motivate me to read the Bible more? Well, let's find out as we turn to the book of Isaiah. Turn to the book of Isaiah that's found in the Old Testament. Book of Isaiah chapter 55 and we're going to read verses 10 through 13. And if you don't mind, in honor of the reading of the Word of God, let's all stand up. There in Isaiah 55, we're going to read verses 10 through 13. Well, you can turn on your Bible app. Or you can turn to page 525 if you have the church Bible underneath your seat. Isaiah 55, 10 through 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower, and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. You may be seated. Now let's look at the background of the book of Isaiah. Now the book of Isaiah was written by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah wrote this around 700 B.C., some nearly 700 years before Christ was born. Now, the book of Isaiah was primarily God's warning to the people of, of, of Israelites, or the Israelites, to be careful in their ways because of the pending judgment of God, the coming of the Assyrians and the Babylonians. But the, the Israelites were, were very stubborn, just like many of us, they were still doing their wicked things and filthy things and, and their lives were full of iniquities. And so in spite of God's warning, they still did what they wanted to do. So God's judgment came upon them. But now here in Isaiah 55, God here is the one speaking. God is speaking not just to the Israelites, but to all people, inviting them to come to Him. You see that in verses 1 and 2 of Isaiah 55. God was inviting all people to come to Him because that would indicate that they do trust Him and that they do rely on Him. Come on now. 
So God is saying, by you trusting in me and relying on me, then I know that you are really seeing me as your sovereign God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, you see that in verses 1 and 2. And God's promise was this, and if you do, then I will bless you free of charge, Come on, without man. a cost. Look at verse 2. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. But God said, in order for you to trust me, to rely on me, you must hear me, you must listen to me, and you must seek me through my word. You see that in verses 2 through 5. Why should I seek God? Why should we seek God? Why do they have to seek God through His word? Six, verses 6 through 9 of Isaiah 55. Why? Because God's word is higher than our thoughts and higher than our ways. And then the verses that we read, not, now that we have a good understanding of what we are reading, of what we read, now in the verses we read, we're going to see there the motivations why I should read the Bible more. Why should I read the Bible more? And here's the first one. Because the Bible is really God's word. Amen. The Bible is really God's word. In other words, it is a message from God. Look at verses 10 and 11. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Here, God has used an illustration. What's the illustration? He said any precipitation that would come down here on earth, such as rain or snow, would fulfill or accomplish its purpose. That is to water the earth to produce an abundant vegetation. That's what he's saying there. So in other words, God is saying all the precipitations do come on earth to water the earth, but it don't or it doesn't come back to me or evaporates without watering earth. Look at what he says in that verse. And do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish. So now using that analogy or illustration, God similarly said, Well, my word is just like the rain in the snow. Yes, sir. Whatever yes, sir. comes out of my mouth, it will accomplish its purpose. It will fulfill its desire. It will happen. Look at verse 11. So it's my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God's word is God's word because whatever God said, it will come to pass. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, there are approximately 2,500 prophecies in the Bible. Out of the 2,500 prophecies in the Bible, 2,000 of them have been fulfilled already. Come on, man. Come on, man. We only have 500 prophecies left in the scriptures that are not fulfilled yet. Why? Because they are futuristic. Mm -hmm. In other words, they all pertain to the future. For instance, the return of Christ, the rapture of the church, the coming of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Those things would come in the future. But here in the next few days, it will come to pass. Why? Because God's <coughs> word will accomplish its yes, purpose. Yes, but most of, or if not many of those prophecies, do pertain to Christ. The messianic prophecies about Christ. And every single one of them, nearly 40 prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ, had already been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're thinking, what are those? Well, I wish I could have made a copy, but if you need one, I have this book. And in this little notebook, it writes down all the prophecies about Christ that had been fulfilled already. Hmm. Just see me after church, and I'll let you borrow this book. But nonetheless, the point I'm trying to say here is that it has been proven that God's Word is God's Word. Why? Because all those prophecies happen and are happening. Over and over in the Bible, God declares that the Bible is His Word. 2 Timothy 3.16, Hebrews 4.12, Romans 1.16, and one of my favorites, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. Look at what it says. For this reason, I'll wait for the slide to come up. For this reason, we also constantly thank God 
that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, not as the word of men, did you see that? But for what? It really is the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. Amen. The reason that we could not understand the word of God, could not appreciate the word of God, Amen. could not apply the word of God in Amen. our lives, is because we do not believe it. Look at what it says. It performs if you believe in it. And I know we have heard this many, many times how so many unbelievers are saying that the Bible is not God's word. Why? Because the Bible was only written by men. Now hear me out. The Bible was only written by men. What's my answer to that? Yes, it is. The Bible was written by men. But look how God explains this to us in 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Pay attention to this one. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never, it's, never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Surely the Bible was written by men, but they were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. In other words, surely they wrote it, but those were not their words, those were the words of God. In other words, what God is saying here is this. During the time that those authors were writing the word of God with their quills. You know what a quill is? You know that little pen with a little feather on top? And as they were writing the scriptures, they were in a hypnotic influence of the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, they were so captivated, so captured, so enamored in their mind by the Holy Spirit that whatever comes to their mind, those were the thoughts of God. Whatever they wrote with their fingers, that's the mind of God being recorded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those are proofs to us that the Bible is really the Word of God. So what do we do? Read the Bible more. Because the Bible is really the Word of God. But look at verse 12 and 13. Look at verses 12 and 13. Here's a second motivation. The Bible is really God's Word of life. In other words, the Bible promises us eternal life if we believe in what the Word is saying. But the Bible is also saying to us that if we really want to have a good life, we have to get or live our lives according to His Word. Look at what it says in verses 12 and 13. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. If we live according to the word, we're going to have joy, yes, we're sir. going yes, to have sir. peace. And who doesn't want joy Come and on, peace? Man. On, man. I am so amazed that so, so many billionaires out there, and yet when you ask them, what do you want in life? Hmm. You can buy anything that you want, and yet they always say, like Oprah, I want joy and peace. Come on, man. I want joy and Come peace. On, and here we are, free of charge, yes, without sir. cost. All we need to do is read the Bible more, and His promise to us is joy yes, sir. and peace. Yes, sir. But look at the continuation of the verse. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Mm -hmm. What the Bible is saying here is, if we live our lives according to His Word, our surroundings, our environment, our neighborhood, our co-workers Say will it. favor us. Yes, sir. Why? Yes, sir. Because we are living our lives according to His Word. But it's not over yet. Look at verse 13. Instead, the thorn bush will grow the pine tree. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. Hmm. That means surely hard times would come to our lives. Yes, surely suffering would come. Surely hardships would come. Surely difficulty and problems would come. But God is promising us here. Yes, but sir. in those times, you will personally mature. You will grow as a person. And God's going to give us the strength to face those challenges. On, and His promises all things will work together yes. Yes. for your good. Amen. Why? Yes, Why? Sir. Because you're living according to the Word. Amen. God's Word has one consistent single message. God's Word is the Word of life. Yes, Why? Sir. Because it's promising eternal life for those who believe and it's promising how to live a good life for those who believe. Do you believe? Yes, if you believe, then the challenge of God is this. 
Read the Bible more. You see, the Bible has 66 books. Yes, sir. It's divided into two books, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, what's amazing about the Bible is the Bible was written by over 40 plus authors over the span of 1,500 years. Can you imagine that? It was written from the time of Genesis to the time of Revelation. There were 1,500 years in between. And those authors came from different generations, different backgrounds, different occupations, different situations, different status in life, and yet they all wrote with one single consistent message. What's that? The Word of God is the Word of life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How could that be possible? How could that be possible that all these 40 authors in a span of 1,500 years wrote the same single consistent message that God's Word is the Word of life and there's not a single contradiction? How could that possibly be? Hmm. It is possible. Why? Because they're getting their source from the one single source, yes, the sir. mind of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why the Bible is the Word of God because it is His Word of life. John 1, 1, it says, that which was from the beginning, hmm. which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the Word of life. Amen. The Bible is the Word of life. No wonder the psalmist said this in Psalm 19, 7 through 11. The law of the Lord. These are synonymous terms for the Bible. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. In keeping them, there is great reward. And do you really want to have a good life? Yes, sir. Then read the Bible more. Do you want to be debt free? Oh, do yeah. you want to have financial stability? Then read the Bible more. Do you want success in your relationships and your friendships? Read the Bible more. Do you want to have success when it comes to your life? Do you want to have a healthy and lengthy, lengthy life? Then read the Bible more. Do you want security or satisfaction in life? Then read the Bible more. God's challenge for us is simply read the Bible more. Yes, if you can spend so much time reading whatever is on the internet, then you can always spend time reading the Word of God and it will bless your socks it, off. Because look at what it says in the Bible. It is a great rewarder of the person who reads the Word. But thirdly, the Bible is God's Word forever. The Bible really is God's Word forever. Look at verse 13. This will be for the Lord's renown. What does renown mean? It means reputation of God. For an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. What is God saying there? Because the Word of God is about my reputation. Hmm. Would God ruin His reputation? Absolutely not. That's right, that's right. If the Word of God represents the reputation or the renown of God, that means God's Word is forever. Yes, that sir. means it will not become an obsolete. It will stay there. It will be with us forever and ever. It will not go away. It will never be destroyed. Why? Because the Word of God is forever. Because it's about His reputation. Now think about that. We always set this aside, but when we get to heaven, guess what we're reading in heaven? It's still the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God is forever. Look at what it says in Isaiah 40 verse 8. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of our God stands forever. God's Word is forever. God's Word is eternal. Yes. It will never be obsolete. The yes. Dallas Cowboys will one day be obsolete. On, but man. the Word of God on, will man. never be obsolete. Are you following me here? Yes, you see, weather, weather could have destroyed the Word of God. Why? 
Because the Word of God, the Bible, was written either on papyrus, plant leaves, or parchment, animal skin. Those are non-durable writing materials, but look, but we have a copy of it. That means weather failed to destroy the Word of God. Do you know that nations tried to put away the Word of God? Yes, sir. Yeah, during the time of Nero in AD 64, he killed 7 million Christians. 7 million Christians. He was worse than Hitler during the time of Holocaust. He killed 7 million Christians. Why? Because his reason was this. So the word of God would not spread anymore. Hmm. During the time of Galerius, emperor of Rome in AD 303, he made the decree to burn all Bibles and all of those who have a copy of the Bible, you kill them also. Come on now, come on now. And yet, look at us. We still have a copy of yes, the Word sir. of God. Why? Because nations failed to destroy the Word of God. Yes, Why? Sir. Because the Word of God is forever. Yes, Time. Time could have destroyed the Word of God. Why? Because there are so many old writings, writings of antiquity, writings of ancient times that have disappeared altogether, and yet we have a copy of the Word of God that came from its original manuscripts. Why? Thanks to archaeology and the discovery of Dead Sea Scrolls. What are those Dead Sea Scrolls? Those are thousands and thousands of fragments of manuscripts of the Old Testament and the New Testament that was discovered in 1947. Mm. The people, the Jewish sect called the Essenes, hid them in a cave there in Jerusalem during the time when Nero and his cohort were trying to destroy all the Bible. Mm. They hid them in a the cave. On, and some 1,000 years later, it was discovered in 1947, and it took some 20 years to put them together. And so now we have some old manuscripts of the Old Testament mm. and the New Testament in our hands. Why? Because time failed to destroy the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God is forever. Only three will last. Only three will last. God, God's people, and God's Word. All other things will be destroyed, but the Word of God is forever. Jesus said this, Matthew 24, 35, Heaven and earth will pass away. Yes, sir. But my words will never pass away. If God's word is eternal, if God's word is forever, then we should read the Bible more because it is truly the very word of God. Let me tell you a funny story as I end. A pastor visited one of his members at the patient's or the person's home. And so when he got there, the lady opened up the door and she said, Well, Pastor, it's good to see you. And before he could say anything, the lady, who was a mother, said to her little daughter, Honey, would you mind getting the book? You know, go to our den and get that book. You know, our favorite book. The one that we love so much and the one that we read so much. Honey, would you go to the den and get that book? Sure, Mama. And so the little girl went to the den, and then she came back. But to her mother's embarrassment, she came back with a TV guide. <laughs> you see, sadly, for too many Christians, the Word of God has become a second or third and fourth when it comes to catalogs, internet, phone, sports stats and many other things. And yet the Word of God is what's valuable for our life. But then we have deserted the Word of God. We decided to stay away from the Word of God. And then we ask the question, why is my life messed up? Why is my physical life messed up? Why is my family messed up? Why is my neighborhood messed up? Why is my community messed up? Why is my city messed up? Why is my city messed up? Why is my country messed up? Why is the world messed up? When the truth is, we know the answer why we have all these messes in our life because we have turned our backs on the Word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But listen. 
But listen, but we can change the trend. Yes, sir. We can change the trend. And we can accept the challenge of God to read the Bible more. God's challenge for us in 2017 so we can have spiritual success that would lead to physical success is read the Bible more. But you're perhaps wondering, but where do I start, Pastor? If you are a new Christian, in other words, you've only been a Christian less than five years, I recommend that you read the book of John. It will tell you about your faith. It will tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ and what He did for you. But also, after that, you read the book of Hebrews. Now, I love the book of Hebrews because if you read the book of Hebrews as if you have read the entire Bible. Because the book of Hebrews is a summary of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Now, however, if you've been a Christian for over five years, maybe 10 years, 15 years, and you're growing in your faith, what do you read? Read the book of Romans. And then read the book of Galatians. Because all those books would allow you to understand what your faith is and what God expects from me. But then, just in case you are a history buff, you love history, then read the book of Genesis, then Exodus, and then the book of Ezra, and then Nehemiah. But wherever you may be in your faith, what's important is this. Read the Bible more. God's challenge for us is read the Bible more. Why? Because it is a rewarder, a rewarder of those who live according to His Word. Let's pray.